<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's evening where I'm at. Uh, greetings from uh, Katzweiler, Germany. Um, I'm Tammy Rome. I am moderator for the Move Against Migraine uh, Facebook group um, and patient advocate. Um, I am the executive director of uh, migraine.disease.org. And tonight we're going to, tonight, I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me. It is evening here, so I'll try to remember that you're all having lunch. Um, but hi, Rosa, I just saw you. Um, that uh, we're, we're gonna talk about how Migraine Awareness Month got started, who was involved, what we did, what we didn't do, <laughs> and um, the progression of how it um, has grown. Just, it's hard to believe, only seven years since we started it. Um, so let's get started um, again. Um, wow, hello there from Australia. Um, we're getting people from all over the world. This is great. Um, so migraine awareness isn't just for people in the United States, although the American Migraine Foundation um, and Move Against Migraine is a US-based um, organization. Um, we do welcome everyone from everywhere. Um, and sometimes some of us decide to just take off across the world. So um, we started Migraine Awareness Month. Uh, originally, it was started by the National Headache Foundation as an awareness week. And it was very informal. Um, and there wasn't a lot of organization around it. It was something that they did just for their organization. Um, and then in 2012, um, it was decided that we would do a Migraine Awareness Month. For the entire month of June. Well, a lot of us were very excited about um, being able to have our own awareness month. And we didn't just get an awareness month, we got an awareness color purple, my favorite color. So I was very happy about that. This was an easy thing for me to do. Um, so there in 2012, um, that was the time that was when we first started it. For those of you who are just joining, um, just again, I'm Tammy Rome. I am a moderator for the American Migraine Foundation's Move Against Migraine Facebook group um, and a patient advocate. I work in a lot of different areas. I'm a licensed counselor specializing in treating people with headache disorders, and um, I'm the executive director for MigraineDisease.org. So back in 2012, first Migraine Awareness Month, we're all very excited. Now, you have to understand there were only a few dozen of us. Um, so we really had to get creative and make a lot of noise. Um, so we started blogging challenges and we started designating days. Chronic Migraine Awareness started it off with uh, Chronic Migraine Awareness Day on June 29th. And I believe there are some other days that they have um, designated. In fact, today is one of those special days because it is um, the anniversary of D-Day. And it is a special recognition to our veterans with migraine. Shout out, I'm a veteran, my husband's a veteran. Yay, veterans, go veterans with migraine. Um, so we started that, uh, Just we just all got excited and we started blogging and telling our story. And many of those stories, you can still find them on the internet back from 2012. Um, but then in 2013, we realized that migraine wasn't the only disabling headache disease and we needed to include everyone else and so we expanded it to be migraine and headache awareness month and it's been that way ever since 2013. Um, back then like i said there were only a few dozen of us we were all very sick um, most of us hadn't found headache specialists let alone had you know there was no such thing as amovig and emgality and ajovi back then um, so we were still very sick and we're in our beds, we're on our couches, like many of you, just passing the time on the internet, telling our stories, and you can see them out there. We're saying, well, you know, today really was an awful day and I didn't get out of bed or I couldn't eat. And we just tell the story of what it's like to live every day with migraine. And many of us would write something every day and share what we had learned. Um, and what we were experiencing to tell people really what was going on. And so um, we continued to grow um, and then um, expanded a social media challenge, Twitter challenge, images. We had logos. 
um, a lot like we do now. They were different, but oh, just it, we wanted everybody to share those images, to share the logo, to share the theme. And every year we've had a different theme. Um, our very first theme, I believe, was um, okay. Now I'm going to go blank. Somebody who remembers posted on there. Um, but we every year we'd have a theme and we would talk about migrate in terms of that theme. And this year's theme is sowing the seeds. And it's really um, a great theme for those of us who've been around for a long time because we've been planting these seeds of migraine awareness for seven years. And I don't know how many of you managed to go to retreat migraine in April, but those of us who've been around since the beginning were blown away by the number of people who were there. It was just a handful of us seven years ago, and now there are thousands. That's what those little efforts did, and your little efforts can do the same thing. There weren't very many of us, and that's just seven years later. Look at all of you. So um, never underestimate the power of your voice and your story while you're hiding behind a screen wrapped in ice packs and sunglasses with the waste paper basket close by. Even if you're that sick, you can make a huge difference for migraine awareness. So get out there, tell your story. Now you're probably wondering, how do I do that? What do I do? Well, you're here, so you're learning. Um, join groups like Move Against Migraine. Get involved. Um, wear purple. Um, if you don't like purple, I'm sorry, but purple is our color. I hope you do. Um, as you can see um, from behind me in my, my bookshelves, um, my office is purple. Um, I have lots of purple um, drink cups. And as you'll see this one, I wanted to show you all of the different ribbons uh, and like uh, bracelets that I've collected. And this was just an easy way to just put them out there and show you. I've worn one or all of these at one time or another. Um, pins, I, scarves um, were a great way to figure out how to tie an ice pack onto my head when I couldn't hold it up there anymore. So I got a bunch of purple scarves and I have more purple t-shirts then I know what to do with or some of them are starting to wear out. Um, so I never, I always have that opportunity. And even if no one said anything and nobody knew why Tammy was wearing purple that day, I felt a sense of pride and I didn't feel like I was hiding migraine anymore. I had a way to say, I have migraine disease and here I am I'm out in the world as best I can hiding behind sunglasses and a hat and whatever I needed to do. But I made sure that I was doing something that I knew said, I have migraine and I'm not going to hide. Um, and, you know, I really never got any grief for it. I mean, I wear Theraspects all the time, not indoors, but I wear Theraspects. You've all seen the pictures. Um, I have an ice cap. I've worn it. In public, I'll take it, my headphones, my Paris bags, everything to the movie theater. Um, it's just, I couldn't enjoy a movie without it, and so I do it. Um, and if somebody asks, well, I'll, I'll tell them why. And usually it's not a big deal. But people, you know, occasionally will ask. Um, I'll do things like um, take a notebook that I got from a conference and just write on it and put stickers on it. Um, just as a reminder, not only gives me a talking point opportunity, but it also reminds me that I'm not alone, that I have hundreds of friends who are going through the same thing and they're going through their day wondering if anybody knows and anybody cares. Um, and those are little reminders. One of the special things I have is I have an antique spoon. Now this antique spoon was given to me by dear friend, Ms. Katie Golden. Um, at a conference last summer. And if you all know the story of um, the spoon theory, migraine patients really 
like the spoon theory because we know exactly what it means to run out of spoons and to never know how many spoons you're going to get and how much it costs just to take a shower, just to fix a sandwich. It can be a very pricey thing. And so I keep this in um, my um, cup with my pen and I keep a pen right here. You can get a little mug here. I'll show you that. Um, this is was a mug that I bought for migraine awareness. Um, month, uh, as you see it just says migratedisease.com on there. I didn't realize that. Um, and I just keep all my pens there. Um, so those little things that I do every day out in the world. Now, online, you can do even more because you have the opportunity to change your um, profile picture. I don't know if you can see my profile picture or not, but I've changed it to the um, frame that was provided by AMF and um, CHAMP um, that it has our um, National Migraine Awareness and Headache, Migraine and Headache Awareness Month on there. Um, and you can change your, your um, profile image, change your, even your cover image, change it to something migraine related. Um, one of the things that started, this was really cool, I'll give a shout out to Kat Jarrett Dykes for this one um, at Chronic Migraine Awareness put a purple light bulb in your, on your porch light for June. And when your neighbors think you're crazy, go ahead and let them. Tell them why. It's for migraine awareness. I have migraine. And by the way, did you know that every fourth household on this block probably has somebody in it living with migraine? That's the way you raise awareness. Um, pins, ribbons, t-shirts, we've been there. Um, look for the logo look for our logo we now have a logo that will remain the same i think is the plan is that it'll stay the same throughout the entire for as long as we have national migraine awareness month until somebody decides to change it um then we will um, have that and you can look for that logo and like share um repost all of that content when you see that logo you know it's somebody doing something for to raise awareness um, you can also do this, especially with the posts that come from the American Migraine Foundation, the things that come that are shared with Move Against Migraine, take those and spread them out. We've got, what, 20, 20 plus thousand people now? Think about how much we can do. We started with a few dozen. Seven years later, we've got a, a, tens of thousands. What can we do in another seven years? Hundreds of thousands? Millions? I think we can do it but the, it all starts with those little likes shares reposts retweets um, that you can do now I talked earlier about it in the beginning because there weren't very many of us we had to make a lot of noise you can make that noise too in fact we want you to because the more voices we have say sharing your experience sharing your story and we have a way for you to do that you can go to the American Migraine Foundation's website and share your story it's very easy. You don't have to create your own blog. You don't have to create your own website. You can just fill it in the form and tell your story. And you can give as much information or as little as you want, make up a name, whatever you need to do to tell the world what it's like to live with migraine. Create your own post if you're really gutsy. Share more of your story. Um, join an online support group. Join two or three, join or 10 or 15. They're all out there. Um, chances are, we're, some of us are probably on there, wherever you go. Um, it's also during this time of the year when there are fundraising events. And um, this is something that's really near and dear to my heart um, because there are, back in 2012, there weren't a lot of there wasn't a lot of information about migraine, so there weren't a lot of people interested in it. And now that the awareness has raised, um, you get people who are trying to just make a quick buck off of it. So what I would encourage you to do is to go to the um, American Migraine Foundation website, go to our partners page, and take a look at the partners that are out there. These are organizations that you could trust. You know that when your money goes to these organizations, it's actually going to get used to really raise raise awareness and not just fill somebody's pocket 
Most of these organizations are nonprofit organizations or it's somebody's blog and they're raising money for one of the other nonprofits. Maybe they're running in a race or they're, they've got a challenge they're doing um, and you know you can, you know you can, you'll make an impact that way. Um, there are also educational events. Um, one of the cool things I like, um, Miles for Migraine not only does races, but they do patient education days. And you can go to their website and find out which one is close to you and go. And even if you can't run, even if you can't walk, you could at least go and for a little while and get some information, meet some other patients and not feel alone and not feel isolated. Um, so um, those are some great ways that you can get involved. Um, and, uh, you know, volunteer. You know, if you see a support group that um, you like to do more with, maybe you, you know, you, you help out where you can. Um, and uh, that may be, you know, some people choose to moderate groups, some people blog, some people volunteer, some people raise money. Um, there are lots of ways to get involved um, to do what, you know, to raise the awareness, but find the thing that really resonates with you because we're all different and we don't um, all like the same thing. Um, we don't have the same personalities. Um, we, uh, that, that original, that original group, they just, um, we're all different. We're all very different. We're all from different parts of the country um, and now the world. Um, and we all have our different things, and that's how it grew, is that we each had our own little niche of what we could do. Some people can play music. Um, the Migraine Moment video um, contest is a great way. If you um, are talented in that way and you want to share the migraine experience through um, a short film, that's marvelous. Um, if you're not that inclined, but you like to promote them, um, find out when the next Out of My Head film is being uh, shown and get a bunch of friends and go watch it, even if you've seen it 10 times. It's something that you can do to raise awareness. Um, some of the things that I like um, that are really, really awesome are little cards, like information cards. This is just one example. There, there are lots of them out there that talk about migraine. And so you don't have to tell the whole story. You can just hand somebody the card. Um, this one, um, I really like. You can tell I'm a fan of Katie's. It is, um, as you have an invisible illness, but you are not. And that, that's a good reminder. Um, this is a little quick one. Six important facts about migraine disease. It's just a quick way to show people um, a little bit about it. Um, this was one of my favorites too. How many of you have seen this one? Super Zoe, the migraine hero. This is a cute book. Um, getting this for a child with migraine, that's a good way to go. That's a good way to go. Don't forget, also, on June 21st, Shades for Migraine is once again having their World Migraine Solidarity Day. So don't forget to wear your sunglasses all day to remind people that migraine isn't just a headache. We have light sensitivity too. Um, let's see, what else have we got that you can do? Um, the Coalition for Headache and Migraine Patients has developed um, a um, migraine language and image guide that you can share that talks about using language that talks about migraine as a disease rather than as a headache. Um, that it is, that doesn't go away between attacks. Even if my head doesn't hurt, even if I'm not vomiting, I still have migraine disease. It doesn't go away. And so there are some tips in that. Um, you can just go to their website. It's at headachemigraine.org. Um, there are lots of good education articles um, at the American Migraine Foundation. Uh, just search in the bar. Um, some people who maybe don't 
if you know somebody who doesn't have a doctor, um, there's the find a doctor tool that you can use, you can tell people about. Um, feel free to message me or email me. Uh, some of the flyers that I, I showed you um, are available. Just let me know. Um, we'll get those out to you. Um, they're just a quick, easy way to share awareness of people. Um, I'm looking here to see. Um, we've got about 10 minutes. If there's any specific things that you have a question about that you want to know that I didn't cover, um, if you're coming in late, Tammy Rome, Move Against Migraine Moderator, Patient Advocate, all over the place. It, uh, just yeah, Google me. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm busy out here. Um, but yeah, if you um, have something specific that you want to uh, you want you wonder about, just let me know here. Um, trying to think if there's anything else we can cover in the last last few minutes. Um, you know, there is, there is one more. I just remembered. The 50 State Network is working on um, proclamations for the month. If your state has not made a uh, Migraine and Headache Awareness Proclamation for the month of June, um, the 50 State Network has, and I believe out on CHAMP's website at headachemigraine.org, um, there's also some information about how you can um, petition, fill out a form to get your state to make that official proclamation that June is Migraine and Headache Awareness Month in your specific state. Um, and that is something that, you know, it's, it, you know, it's an email, it's a letter you can write. Um, and you can do it at home, in the comfort of home, whenever you can. Um, so, yeah, I just, in the last few minutes, I've just said never underestimate the power of your story. It is unique. No other migraine patient has your story. But somebody else needs to hear your story. It will help them. And if you keep it to yourself, they'll never know. So don't be afraid to just put it out there. And you'll be surprised how many people will contact you. They'll just drop you an email. They'll look you up on Facebook and say, hey, I read this. That really helped me. And you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a neurologist, headache expert. You don't have to be a full-time patient advocate to Tell people what it's like to live with migraine. Um, it's powerful. Um, so I'll leave you with a little bit of what happened when somebody shared their story. I don't know how many of you know, um, but um, Terry Robert wrote a book in 2002, I believe. I might be wrong about that year, um, called living well with migraine disease and headaches. It was the first time migraine and disease had been used in the same sentence, let alone as a book title. In 2007, I was sick with migraine and cluster headache that were both out of control. I was getting ready to go back to work full time and go to graduate school with teenagers in the house. So yeah, I'm a glutton for punishment. But I knew I had to get migraine under control. So I went on the internet because that's what you do, right? First thing I find is Terry's website. I ordered that book. Didn't even think twice about it. Didn't ask my husband. Money was tight. I didn't care. I bought the book. Gave it away. Bought another one. Gave that one away. I forget how many times I did that. The book changed my life. She told her story. She didn't just tell her story. She told the story of other patients. She told the stories of the doctors who helped the patients. And I finally started to realize that I needed to take migraine seriously. My doctor didn't want me to try a preventive. And I won't tell you which one it was because, well, it's already out there anyway. 
and um, everybody has a different experience. But I was worried about side effects, and I kept telling him I wasn't going to do it. I had migraine almost every day. I was sick. I was missing work at least one day every week. I was in bed every weekend. But I wouldn't take medicine because there might be a side effect. I mean, how bad could my life really get? Terry's book convinced me to try. And when that one didn't work, her friendship convinced me to try another one. And another one, and another one, and you know, this story. Until finally I found something that helped. Again, it doesn't matter what helped me, because it might not help you. And the thing that didn't help me might help you. But she told the story. And she gave me the courage to act. And keep trying, and keep trying, and keep trying. So from 2007 to 2014, I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried until finally at the end of 2014, something finally started working. Seven years. It would have been really easy for me to give up. Then I thought about it. But by then I had all these friends who were also trying, who weren't giving up. If I gave up, I might convince somebody else to give up. So I felt a responsibility, not only to myself and my family, but to the others who were also trying very hard not to give up. Our stories gave us strength. It gave us hope. It gave us courage when we had none. And your story can do the same thing. So I want to start reading your stories. Go to the AMF website. Share your story. Join the groups. Post on Facebook. Use our logo. Please use the logo so people know you're just part of this bigger movement of migraine patients who are saying, enough. We exist. We deserve to be taken seriously. We deserve to have competent doctors and good medicines that are safe and effective. And we deserve to have accommodations like dark glasses, water at our desk, headphones, whatever we need, you know, fragrance-free policies to help us do our work. Um, many of you have seen my favorite specs. I'm going to switch to them really quick. These are what I wear out in public because I never know about when I'm going to have fluorescent lights, bright, shiny lights. I look at these like a cane or a crutch, a wheelchair, a braille book. These allow me to be in the world so that I'm not sick and I'm not hidden. I'm out there because of these. I'm out there because of headphones and ice packs and you know masks to cover scents. These are just accommodations. These are no different than if I needed a wheelchair. And with that, go out there. Tell people about your experience with migraine. And don't worry about the people who are going to be rude. Just delete them, block them, move on. Because there are plenty of people out there who do want to hear. And there are lots of people out there who need to hear it and will respond. So let's grow from a few dozen seven years ago to a few million in seven more years. Have a great day. National Migraine and Awareness Month. I look forward to hearing from all of you, seeing you all. I miss you all so much. Um, and I'll be back in the States just next month in Philadelphia for the American Headache and um, Society's annual conference. And I know a bunch of you are going to be there and can't wait to see you. Um, we'll post um, uh, updates on all that we learn and share with you. Um, have a great afternoon.